Your soul is like your emotional part of you. You could say it's the even like the psychological part. People that go through trauma often are left with their souls affected in a negative way. The things of this life can be rough things. That's why Jesus needs to heal many souls. We thank God for the healing for the body. How many of you have ever been healed in your natural body by the Lord before? Let me see your hands. Amen. He's healed my body multiple times, thankfully. And he's healed my soul. And this is what we're talking about. He says, wherefore, lay apart all filthiness. Lay apart all filthiness. What is that? Filthiness is anything wicked or dirty. It actually means cheap or shabby. You can believe that from the Greek. Lay apart any shabby, cheap, wicked things. Lay it apart. Put it away from you. Cast it off. Cast it aside. You've got to picture yourself free from all the filthiness of the world. world. The filthy things of the world can stain your soul. That's why. And he says, and superfluity of naughtiness. Now that's what this, this just means. And, and all abundance of naughtiness or evil or wickedness or badness, depravity, or malice, maliciousness. Lay that aside. In fact, I would like to challenge you to do something with me for a minute. As we read the scripture, whenever you read the scripture and something like this comes upon you, I urge you to practice this where you meditate on that. But let's do something for a minute if you can close your eyes for a minute, everyone close your eyes. Now, picture yourself laying aside any filthiness that could be filthy talking, filthy thinking, filthy actions, filthy desires, naughtiness, evil. Picture anything that you've ever done or thought or said that was bad, that, that wasn't good for your soul. Now picture you taking that and just casting out, casting it aside from you, laying it apart from you, separating it from you, separating those actions, those words from you. Amen. So you gotta picture that. You gotta let God's word work deep down in your mind. Get it in your imagination. Then one of the best ways that you can begin to hear the voice of God is to let the word sink down in your heart and think about what the word is telling you. And he says here, and receive with meekness, with humility, the engrafted word. What is that? That word means the implanted word. The implanted word, which is able to save your souls. Which that word save is also the word heal and deliver, preserve, make whole. Some of our souls are not whole, they're not healthy. Our emotional life, your relationship life. I'm talking about like even like any type of relationship that you have because your soul has been affected, that's affecting your relationships. But he says receive. 
receive with meekness the implanted word. He's talking about the word of God. To receive the word of God. And that word is able to save your souls. To save your souls. To heal your soul. He sent his word and he healed them. You know, we, we have to realize Jesus will heal our soul. But we got to stop allowing filthy and naughty things to affect our souls. Amen? You shouldn't be looking for a healing every time you come to church. You know, you come to church and you get healed, you get restored, then you go out and live it in the muck and the dirt and the mire, you see? <laughs> That's why he says, you got to lay that stuff aside. Be careful what you allow in your mind. Be careful what you allow your eyes to see. Be careful what you allow to be entertained with. I don't know how the young generation in these days are going to survive with the type of music that they got pumping in their brain. Some of that music, you know, I've just heard some when you're at a stoplight and you're hearing blasting out of the car, you know, using all types of F words and B words and whatever, you know, and people allowing that stuff and sometimes young people having it in, in their, with their earphones on. If I was a parent that had little kids still, I'd be on top of that. Uh, Mike knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> One time Mike brought a CD of Eminem. Eminem, or wait, Eminem. And I just happened to be walking by in his bedroom and saw it there, and I turned it on, and the first thing he did was F you out for buying his CD. That's the first thing he said. He said, you are a effing blank for buying my CD, he said. And then he started talking about how his mom was a bee and all kinds of stuff. I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> Mike never saw that CD again, did you, Mike? <laughs> so I don't, but, but now it's, it's probably, even, I think it's probably even gotten worse than that. But you got to lay all that aside, Saint. Or you're going to need a healing for your soul every, every, every day. <laughs> See, you got to stop letting that garbage in. Like Herman said, the famous singer who's now with the Lord. He said, garbage in, garbage out. You know, you let garbage in, you're gonna let you're gonna produce garbage out of your mouth, out of your actions. Look at what Peter said about this. First Peter 2 and 1. I mean uh 20. Wait. You love it. <laughs> Dearly beloved. I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. Now you got to remember, we are strangers and pilgrims here on the earth, in the world. Now, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. But in the present world state that it's in, you got to realize you are just a stranger. You're, in, you're an alien to this world. As strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the what? Which war against the soul. See, as you're here on earth, Brother Charlie, you're, I don't know if you knew it, but you're just a stranger here. Not in the church, but you're a stranger to the world. <laughs> We're strangers. We're pilgrims. That means we're just passing through. This is not our home. Our home is made of pure gold. The streets are made with pure gold. You can see right through the streets. Transparent. Diamonds growing on trees and stuff. <laughs> Where the glory of God brightens up the whole place. And the glory of Jesus lightens up the whole city there. Amen. We are strangers and pilgrims. So he says, while you're here, you have to abstain 
Refrain yourself, hold yourself off from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. You see? And there's all types of fleshly lusts out there. Like I was saying about the music. Not only music, I mean there's of course we know of sexual lust that is just the devil just unleash that upon the society, you know. When I was growing up, when me and Brother Charlie were growing up, I say <laughs> on TV, now there was only like five channels to begin with. Now there's like 800 channels to choose from, but there was like five channels. But you didn't see no kissing and the next few steps. There was nothing like that. In fact, you know, I don't know if you ever watched the Dick Van Dyke show. But uh, <laughs> that was like the main show, prime time, you know. And when they showed the bedroom scene, the husband was in one bed, there was a desk in the middle, and the wife was in the other bed. Good night, honey. Okay, good night. And they're fully clothed, covers on top. Little by little, the devil has increased the war against the soul. You see, it says the fleshy must war against the soul. So it's a war we're in. That's the strategic plan of the enemy where if you want to watch a TV show, even on sometimes the commercials and things like that, you got to be careful what you allow to be entertained with because that wars against your soul. He says, abstain from it. Abstain from it, it will hurt your soul. If, if you're going to be a soldier of Christ, you want to be a victorious soldier, amen? But this is one way that the enemy attacks is through fleshly lust and wars against your soul. Now, not only fleshly lust of sexual lust, but you got lust of just People could lust after a new car, you know, or lust after homes and clothing and things like that. Don't let your your soul and your heart be fixed on natural, temporary things like that. Seek the Lord. Let your heart belong to the Lord. And then the Lord will, will bless you with everything you need, guaranteed. Because the Bible says, Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. He promised to open up windows of heaven to you and bless you. So you, you don't have to seek after things. You seek after God. God will bless you with what you need and he'll give you and do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. See, so if we go back now to uh, James, see, we want to have a healthy soul. So we're we're lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. The implanted word, which is able to save your soul, heal your soul, deliver your soul. Amen. We want to have a healthy soul. Look at uh, Psalm 23 here. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Now here, David wrote this. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. Now let me remind you what the New Testament says. Peter said, for you were all sheep going astray, but you are now returned to the shepherd and bishop of your souls. I, I didn't put that up here. I'm just quoting it. We were all like sheep going astray. But he says, the Lord is the shepherd and the bishop of our souls. Jesus is the shepherd of our soul. He's the bishop of our soul. 
God has, you know, bishops here on earth. But Jesus is, is your main bishop, amen? He's your shepherd. That's in 1 Peter 2 and 25. So the Lord is my shepherd, he said. Look at verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. That means the Lord cares for you so much as he is your shepherd. If you were a sheep, he's going to bring you to the nice green pastures. He, he's going to tell you to lie down. Take it easy. He want, Remember Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. He said, you shall find rest unto your souls. Don't let your soul be troubled with the things of this life. Don't let your soul be overwhelmed with the trauma that happens to people. Many people face very serious afflictions. Attacks. And it's the enemy, it's the devil working through people or circumstances to try to damage your soul. That's why the Lord is saying he's, he's your healer. He wants to restore that soul. See, you can look as nice as you are, as, as you can on the outside, but if your soul is troubled, see, people can see the condition of, of your soul even it shows through your outward appearance often. You see it in someone's eyes sometimes, or just their demeanor, you know, the soul animate, uh, animates through you. I'm saying that right. Animates. In fact, the word soul, that word animate is in there in the Greek. It could show, you know, if, if someone doesn't smile that often, that's an effect of the condition of their soul. But Jesus wants you to smile. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to be healthy. He will lead you by the still waters. You know, and I found out this is spiritual, but you know that God even put the green grass and the waters in the natural world for us to go to and you will feel God's refreshing there. Especially if you're a believer. God can really refresh your soul there naturally. That's just a side bonus for you. Especially the springtime and summertime is coming soon. You should go, you know, you can go to this park and find that that, that water uh, pond or lake they have there. Grab a seat and sit down there and and, and just start talking to God. And, and you can get a nice refreshing from him. And the scriptures say he made me to lie down in green pastures. Now he's, he's speaking symbolically, but even naturally God made the earth to do different things for us. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He restores my soul. That restoring means to turn back. Turn your soul back and convert you back. To recover your soul. Now, Jesus don't only want to recover your soul to your healthy estate that you had on earth. You know, maybe if you could think back to a time when your soul was more lively and vibrant and happy. But he not only will restore you back to that point, but he'll restore your soul back to his original intention of when before sin even entered into man. He'll restore us back to an eternal glory. In fact, we're called, you know, to obtain the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. We partake of the divine nature. He'll make your soul so healthy, more healthy than, than it's ever been. And I don't care how far your soul has gone into the depths of darkness. He'll restore your soul, let you begin to shine again, and let your soul begin to be vibrant with eternal glory. Amen? He restores my soul. 
He will retrieve it. He will rescue it. He will relieve it and refresh your soul. Your soul can drink of the goodness of God. As <coughs> remember Jesus said, if any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. And out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. You drink from Jesus, he'll cause rivers to start flowing out of you. He leadeth me beside the still waters, he restored my soul, and he leads me in the paths of righteousness. You know? So, as Jesus touches your soul, you got to remember what the word says. Lay apart all that filthiness. Be sanctified under the Lord. Let him lead you in the paths of righteousness. In everything you do, every day. Every day, let him lead you in the paths of righteousness. He declares you righteous through faith. You're made righteous. Now let him lead you in the paths of righteousness. Lead, he will lead you so your conversation is righteous. Your associations become righteous. Who you associate will determine a lot of how you end up. Who you associate with. Be careful who you associate with. Now we could we can speak to anyone, you know. And sometimes we have to associate ourselves in limited capacities with people who do not know Jesus when we're working. Even in our families, you know, sometimes there's people there that don't know Jesus. And so, sometimes you're in a situation where you have to associate with ungodly people. But, when you have a choice, you know, before I met Jesus, I was partying Friday nights, Saturday nights. The party actually started in my house. When I was a teenager, you know, my mom's house. The band was playing, the house would be packed. And then we'd, we'd go out and party in the alleys, in the streets, by the railroad tracks, or in someone's basement, or whatever. And those were the people I was associated with. All they wanted to do was drink, get high. And that's all I wanted to do before I met Jesus. <laughs> but when I met Jesus, I was just telling brother, I was just talking to Brother Jim about this on the way. Jesus set me free at the age of 16 from all drugs and alcohol and an amazing experience. And he spoke to me. He told me, just ask me. Because I was I was telling him I can't give it up. He said, just ask me. And when he set me free, I was free. And I actually walked down the street and found my friends, you know, 16 year old. I didn't know what being saved was. I didn't know nothing. I was raised Catholic. I didn't know I was saved and I was, you know. <laughs> I got saved before I knew what being saved was. And I walked down there and met my friends. They were drinking and stuff on the front porch of my friend's house. Right after Jesus delivered me and they offered me a beer. I said, I don't need that anymore. And it was like a couple guys and a couple young ladies. And they're like, quit joking with us. You know, because they knew I was like the main, you know, one of the main party heads, you know. I'll be the one going to buy the beer because I look the oldest. And in those days, all you had to do was be 18 years old to buy the beer. And it was crazy. From the time I was 13 years old, the liquor stores never questioned me. They thought I was 18 because I was as tall as I am now when I was 13. So I, I was the one going to buy a beer and I'd come back with as much beer as we needed. <laughs> they never questioned me, not, not once. When, when the police would come because it passed curfew, they would arrest all my older friends and never even ask me my age. It was so strange. <laughs> I'd be standing there, the police are get, gathering everyone up and they never even question me how old am I. <laughs> Like, okay, I mean, and that, that happened twice, or no, three times, it was crazy. But, 
So I used to party all the time, but when, when Jesus set me free and I went there, they asked me if I wanted a beer. I said, no, I don't need that anymore. And after a while, I'm like sitting there, I'm thinking like, okay, they're drinking, I'm not drinking. And then, you know, they had other plans or whatever. To drink more and party more. And before the next Friday night came for a big party, Jesus had supernaturally showed me about a church on TV. On a TV channel that didn't know exist. You know, it's a, it's a longer story than that. It was supernatural in a dream and then on the TV. So that Friday night, they happened to be having a miracle deliverance healing service on the north side, and me and my sister and one of my friends, I convinced them to come with me, and we went on the bus, and now I found my party, my new party, my new party spot, man. <laughs> it was Faith Tabernacle Church, glory to God. Walked in that place, big church. People were getting demons cast out of them, being slain in the spirit. I got slain in the spirit that day. Started experiencing the Holy Spirit in a mighty way. So guess where I was now every Friday night, every Saturday, every Sunday. <laughs> I couldn't associate with my old friends. Some of them watch me sometimes, you know. But they understand now. They didn't understand back then. Some of them were were kind of upset with me because all of a sudden I like disappeared, you know. <laughs> but they understand now. So then I found myself with a whole new group of friends. I mean, that's what you got to do. Find yourself around the people of God. If you're hanging around people that all they want to do is get in the dirt, filthy stuff, nasty stuff. You got to lay that apart. He will lead you in paths of righteousness. He'll lead you with some good things to do. Uh, like, for example, starting, I think, the 26th of this month on a Wednesday night, on that week, we're starting our Wednesday 5 p.m. prayer and Bible study. Again. So we want to. Let everyone know. They'll have a great opportunity to come. There'll be different Bible teachers. <clears throat> and we pray a lot of the saints will start coming back to church. And even on that Wednesday, it's going to be powerful. Sister Angie's going to teach the first lesson on the 26th of May. 5 p.m. Wednesday. It's a, it's a good time to meet. It's going to be prayer. Bible. There's not going to be no Facebook Live on that. It's just going to be a more intimate setting so we can really let the implanted word save our souls. Amen. Now let's look at Luke 4 18. This is the Jesus came in the flesh. He was here as a man. And one of the first things he said. This is when Jesus came to his hometown. When he was first starting his ministry. And he found the scripture in Isaiah where he said. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. It's the spirit of God. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Now look at this. He has sent me to heal. He sent me to heal. He sent me to restore, heal, deliver the broken heart. Now we know Jesus is famous for healing people's bodies. The lame walking, blind eyes seeing. He did so many miraculous miracles of healing. 
leprosy being healed, people's withered hands being restored. But what about Mary Magdalene? You know what the Lord did for her? She was possessed with seven demons. And the Lord cast them out. And of course, restored her soul. She became a very close disciple of Jesus. And many other people, because it said, He has sent me to heal. Now, the ministry of Jesus is still in operation now. Jesus is still doing this, and He uses people to minister. The words that I'm speaking unto you are coming from Jesus. And God can even use you to bring His healing to others. He said to heal the brokenhearted. Brokenhearted means people that have been crushed and shattered to pieces and bruised. Where is that bruising? That bruising he's talking about is in the soul. The brokenhearted people have a wounded soul that Jesus came to heal that soul. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. This word captive means a prisoner of war. A prisoner of war. You may be a prisoner of war today. You may be being held captive as a prisoner of war. The spiritual war that's against our souls. Remember the demons used things to war against our soul. You may be a prisoner today, but you can be set free from captivity today because Jesus said, I came to preach deliverance, freedom, forgiveness, and pardon to the captives. If you're being held captive by the enemy, he will, he will delete your sentence. He will pardon you and let you go free from any spiritual bondage, any natural bondage. And recovering of sight to the blind. He'll make you see again. You know, when when the devil blinds people's souls, and when he hurts their souls, often there's a spiritual blindness that comes upon their spiritual eyes. Your spiritual perception. When he says sight to the blind, here he's, he's speaking spiritually mostly. Where people aren't seeing clearly. You know, there's some people in this world that don't even believe that Jesus is real or that God exists. They're spiritually blind. The Bible says, if our gospel is hid, it's hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded their minds. How many want to see clearly? Spiritually, you want to see beyond this carnal realm. You see beyond the flesh. Jesus recovers your sight. He will give you sight to see spiritually, to see the hope of your calling that is set before you. Some people feel despair. Some people feel that. What's the use of going on or going forward? They're blinded to what God has put before them. But God makes a plan for you. You can delay it. But God said, He only can restore the years that the canker worm have eaten away. The canker worm and the caterpillar. You may have wasted years by making a wrong step. By turning down a wrong pathway, maybe you did it more than once. And now you can't see. Maybe you heard a long time ago what God wanted to do for you, through you and how he wanted to use you and the calling or the, the purpose he has for your life. But because you made wrong decisions and you maybe some people went far the wrong way. And you become blinded. Not only blinded to see, but deaf where you can't hear. Spiritually deaf. Come dull of hearing. Callous. 
your spiritual hearing has become callous. Jesus spoke and said many people in his day, that was their condition. They were dull of hearing, their eyes were blind, spiritual eyes were blind. But he came to recover your sight. How does that happen? Receive with meekness the implanted word. Keep receiving his word. Let that word go in you. Let that word go in you more than TV shows and more than other things. Get a good diet of his word going into you to restore your soul. He says to set at liberty them that are bruised or crushed. This word bruised is crushed. Some people have been crushed, broken, and Jesus comes to heal. He wants you to have a healthy soul. He'll heal your body, make you look good on the outside, but he wants your soul to shine through your body. Amen? Now, let's look at something, because this shows us a little bit more how in Psalm 119. How does this work? Look at this. Psalm 119. He said, Blessed are the undefiled in the way. The undefiled in the way. Undefiled means those that are sound, without spot, without blemish. Happy are those. See, that lay apart, that filthiness, that stay away from that. That makes your soul happy. That makes you blessed. Undefiled in the way. Who walk in the law of the Lord. You see. If you walk in the spirit. You won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. When you give your mind over to the things of the spirit. You won't want to follow. The inclinations of the flesh. So blessed are the undefiled in the way to walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies. Happy are those. Happy. The word blessed is happy. Are those that keep his testimonies. If you've been sad, you should want to be happy. How do you get happy? Get in his word. Let that word touch your soul. Keep his testimonies. That word keep, you know, we, we spoke a lot about that. Where you guard his word, protect his word. The word you're hearing today, don't let the enemy steal it away from you. Don't be distracted even now. So let that word get down into your soul. Blessed are they that keep his step and that seek him with the whole heart. The whole heart. And seek him. Word seek means to frequent, frequent him, follow and pursue him. You're pursuing God. You're frequently before his face. You're frequently receiving his word with your whole heart. Bless my name and keep his testimonies that seek him with the whole heart. You're searching, you're pursuing for him, you're looking for him. Jesus said, seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Ask and it shall be given. See, when you seek the Lord, he'll be found of you. Are you seeking God? Are you frequently seeking him? Where is your mind going? Where is your heart? Your heart what stirs up your feelings? See, this word heart deals with feelings and even your, your intellect. The center. Where, what drives you? Is it Jesus? Or is it something of the flesh? 
But if you want to be happy, begin to seek the Lord with your whole heart. Give him up your attention. Make sure you give him. You know, and I suggest, of course, seek the Lord early. To seek the Lord early. And even if you got to be at work at 7 a.m. or school or whatever early, get up earlier. Don't be like, oh, I got school or I got work, so I got to go there and then maybe later I'll read the scripture. That's not really seeking the Lord. <laughs> you got a plan to seek the Lord. If you got a favorite TV show, how many of you ever was watching a TV series? And you knew what time that show came out every week or every day, whatever it was. I mean, now they got TV on demand, you know, but in times past, you had to watch that show when it came on, you know. <laughs> and you wouldn't let nothing, you know, you'd be looking at your clock, man, I gotta get home or I'm gonna miss that episode, you know. <laughs> you gotta be that way and more when it comes to you seeking the Lord. Just like you prepared to be here today in church. You know, if you was up all night last night watching movies or I know you wouldn't you wouldn't have been at Bubba's Club or nothing like that. But maybe some people were, and that's why they're not here today. <laughs> but if, you know, Saturday night and you're like staying up late and eating popcorn and all that. Next thing you know, it's 2 a.m. and you're still up. How are you going to get up to church good? See, that's not having your mind on the Lord. You know, you start thinking about the Lord for Sunday and Saturday because you got to start preparing. Man, I want to be late for church. Someone might offer you to go somewhere where it'd be late Saturday. You got to make those decisions and say, nah, that won't be good for me because I've got to be at church in the morning. So you got to take a stand for Jesus. You gotta take your own stand. That's seeking the Lord with your whole heart. Then every day, you know, not just going to church, going to church is very important, but every day, receive with meekness his word. Humbly come before the Lord and let the Lord, let that word become implanted in your life. It heals your soul. That's how you get a healthy soul, do his word. That's how you become happy. God wants you to be happy. Happy. That, that's the word blessed means. Happy. Happy. Being happy is where you're showing a healthy soul. And when you've got Jesus, you got true happiness. True joy. True satisfaction. Seek him with your whole heart. You're pursuing him. It says they also do no iniquity. Why? Because you're seeking the Lord with your whole heart. You don't got no time for no doing iniquity stuff. <laughs> they also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Walking in the ways of the Lord. Glory to God. You're treating people right. The ways of the Lord. You're thinking about the Lord all the time. When you're going about in the markets, you're thinking about the Lord. You're not cursing people out. When you're driving your car down the road, you're not run, trying to run people off the road and giving them the finger out of your window and things like that. You know, you're people might try to run you off the road. And you might be tempted to try to hit them right in the back of your car. But you're walking in the ways of the Lord, so you refrain. You say, Father, forgive them. <laughs> they know not what they do, you see. They're keeping yourself in the ways of the Lord, keeping yourself from anger. Because the Bible says, let all anger be put away from you, but all wrath. The Bible says, love even your enemies. I think for me, like, the biggest temptation is when people are very rude on the roads, you know, driving. And where they almost, like I've had several times. I'm on the expressway. 
and I'm in the fast lane, you know, they, they call it the fast lane. And I must have not even known that someone wasn't backing me, you know. My mind just just out of Jesus, you know, driving. <laughs> they must have been the back of me. You know how sometimes you can look back and they're flashing the lights or something trying to get your attention because they think you're going too slow, you know. Speed limit is 55. You might be doing 65. They want to do 85, so they think you're going slow, you know. <laughs> so I've had several times where all of a sudden that this car comes up and just barely misses me. I mean, like they were intentionally wanting to run me right off the road. And you're already going like 65, so it's very dangerous. That happened to me probably 10 times. I mean, no lie. That's why I try to stay out of that lane as much as possible. I go for it. Because these people are crazy these days, huh? Road rage. It's road rage, yeah. And those are some of the hardest times, like, when, when that has happened to me, sometimes I'll see them going, and sometimes I'll get a buzz. Like, I'll see they're, they're about to crash, and I'll start getting happy that maybe they're going to run off the road and get killed, you know. But then I'll, I'll say, okay, no, 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 I can't think like that. <laughs> I'll force myself to say, oh, God, bless them, protect them. <laughs> now, now it's become easier for me to do that. Because I force myself to drive in the paths of righteousness. <laughs> so now when that happens, it's easier for me to say, oh God, bless them. Don't let them crash, Lord. It's, and, and I really mean it now, you know. <laughs> you can kill that road rage. It's crazy. People are shooting people out there. Road rage. They're even shooting you on the expressways now. <laughs> you got to be careful. They walk in his ways. They don't do iniquity. I remember one time there was an older sister that used to come. She, she passed away. I won't mention any names. But she used to come to the church and I used to pick her up a lot. And we, were, we, we stopped on the side of the road to pick up someone. So we're waiting for them to come out of the house. And as this other car is trying to squeeze by, it made her mad and she was in the next seat, you know, in the passenger seat. The window's down. She starts yelling at them, and I don't know if she cussed at them, but it sounded like almost like she cussed them out. I said, no, don't do that. And I shut her window. <laughs> I said, don't do that with me in the car. Because <laughs> I don't want to get shot. <laughs> I can't believe it. This was a church mama. Started, she was mad at them. There was no reason to be. Just because they're trying to squeeze by, I mean, let them by. And she got mad. Man, I told her, I said, don't ever do that with me in the car. Say, so, but you've got to walk in the way, ways of the Lord. But when you seek the Lord in the morning, before you do anything else, like I said, you got to be at school at 7. You better wake up at 4 or something. Four or five, you know, give yourself enough time to soak in the presence of God every day. Put some praise to God. I like to make some tea and coffee. The Lord knows my routine. First I, first I drink a cup of tea with it, then I drink a cup of coffee. So I don't drink too much coffee, so I, I drink tea first. <laughs> And I just sit down with him and just begin to soak his word and absorb it every day. He's healing. He, he restores your soul in those moments. And it's like light begins to shine. Your eyes begin to open. You see things more clearly. He puts everything into perspective. He begins to talk to you. Seek him with your whole heart that way. Then you will also do no iniquity. You'll walk in his ways. It says, Thou has commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. See that? Diligently. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Now, this is interesting. This is where you're very serious 
This word diligent it means with vehemence. Vehemence, sir. Vehemence. How do you say that? Vehemence. Yeah. Vehemence. You keep this word like vehemently. You know how you're, you know, that means that you're so serious about something. He says, he's telling the Lord, you, you commanded us to keep your word vehemently. It also means wholly, completely, speedily, speedily. I love that speedily. You're quick to choose the way of the Lord. You're, you're quick to reject the enemy and quick to choose Jesus. To keep his word speedily. Keeping his testimonies, keeping his word. And that's how he heals our souls. When you get his word in you, that's a key thing to having a healthy soul, to becoming happy in life. It doesn't matter about your circumstances. You may live in a one room shack. Since I've been in Africa many times, and you wouldn't believe, you know, the way some people are living. See that? That room right there, I've, I've seen shacks about that size and with a mother, father, and two, three children living in there. And you step out and it's mud. It's, it's not like nice, it's like all mud and the, the floor in there is dirt. It's just not muddy because it's dry. Four people living in, a, living in a room like that and they cook outside. There's no kitchen, nothing like that. No, no run of water, nothing like that. I've seen many people living in places like that. And some of them are rusty. There's millions of people living like that. Now, there's nice places in Africa, too. You know. But, like in Congo, for example, 70% are living in that below poverty level. They got little shacks and sometimes, you know, one room in a building and it's like, you know, barely enough room for a bed. And a lot of them are very happy believers. <laughs> you see them and they know how to keep their clothes nice and fresh and clean and they'll come busting out of it. If it's a female, they'll have a nice dress on and look like you know, they just came from the beauty salon. And you see where they're living, you're wondering, like, how did that happen? Or a brother in the Lord. You know, people in Africa love to dress up in suits and nice dresses, you know, going to church. So they come with nice suits on and everything. And they might be living in a place like that. And they seem happy. They seem gracious, you know. They want you to be happy, you know. They're looking out for your well-being, you know. <laughs> because they've been seeking the Lord. They love God. So it, it, it doesn't matter your circumstance. What kind of house you live in. Whether you got a car or you don't have a car. Don't base your joy and your your satisfaction on those things. Let the Lord satisfy you. Let's look to the Lord right now. Let's just close our eyes and look to Him. Father, we thank you for showing us your words, for revealing to us your great love and comfort. We pray, God, that you will manifest your grace and your love in such a way that we'll begin to understand you more, oh God. Each one of us, Lord, have a soul. You said all souls belong to you, but the soul that sins it shall die. But you have the remedy to even revive the dying soul. Oh, Jesus, we pray that you will heal everyone's soul that is listening today. 
no matter how far gone they gone the spring, let them come back to the bishop of their souls, your son Jesus. Jesus, we love you. We thank you so much. Let's make this confession to the Lord together. Just say this out loud to the Lord and say, Lord Jesus Christ, I receive your word. You are the bishop of my soul. You're the shepherd of my soul. My soul delights in you. Only you can satisfy my soul. I set aside all filthiness, all dirtiness of the world. That is not a part of me, but I belong to you. Sanctify my mind, my body, and my soul. Keep me in your way of righteousness, Lord, so I can be blessed, so I can be a happy soul. Heal me, Lord. Deep down inside. You came to heal the broken heart. If there's any bruises upon my soul, if there's any cuts or tears, I ask you to heal me now, Lord. By your precious name, by your own love, and I believe it right now. They just begin to thank Him and praise Him for what He's doing. We know that every time we, we ask God, He will answer. So we know He's, he's answering right now. Oh, Lord, thank you for your healing virtue, your healing power, restoring the souls today. Restore, oh, Lord. Restore. Thank you, God. Our Father, thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for your great grace, your love, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Saints, I encourage you to linger in his presence. You gotta learn how to linger in his presence on your home. Let the Lord restore your soul. If you need healing, if you need more healing for your soul, get alone with the Lord. Open up his word. Read the book of Psalms. Read the New Testament. Read something and meditate on it. And God wants his ministers to teach his people to get their breakthrough every day. And get to the point where you don't need a breakthrough because you're walking in the victory. You don't have to wait until you come to church. Now you still got to come to church. Amen? There's things there that you'll get because the Lord operates through his apostles, prophets, pastors, men, but the Holy Spirit is with you every day, every moment. Jesus said he'll never leave you or forsake. So every day, learn to wait upon the Lord. Find yourself a place. Summertime's coming. If I was by this park, I'd be sitting by that, by that water, under a tree or something. Get that Bible and meditate on the Lord. You know, get some good times with Jesus. You'll be so strong in the Lord, so healthy in the Lord. Or find yourself a little corn. Maybe you live in a house that's very rowdy and a lot of noise. And it's too cold or rainy outside. Don't make no excuse. Find your little corn. And if you got to crawl into a closet. <laughs> that's why Jesus said, if you go into your closet, the Father will see you. Amen. Find yourself, even if it's a little corner. But if you can then go by the still waters and the green pastures. <laughs> Let the Lord bless you there. Hop on the bus, go to the lakefront or something. You know, sit out there with the waters there. Read that Bible. Begin to read, begin to meditate. Have some praise and worship.
worship being pumped in your ears and melodies of the Lord. Keep yourself strong in the Lord. Amen? Now let's clap our hands for Jesus today. Speak the name of Jesus.